we know that life and death, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, I think it's the next slide. Um, Proverbs, and I have it, I typed it out in a couple of different versions. Um, in Proverbs 18, 21, it says the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit. The uh, message version, you can go to the message version. It says words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit, you choose. In the amplified version, it says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. Wow. Now, you know, we have the ability because of the word of the Lord and because of God's presence to break out of these negative paradigms and, and and today what I want to do is just challenge any areas of our heart where we have been, where we can be really negative or just walk in unbelief and just have a negative mindset. And it's really easy to, to operate like that. And, um, but it really hinders our walk with the Lord. If we want to see the awakening and the miracles that we all pray for, we have to shift this, our heart, right? And, you know, I mean, we don't have to, to be a rocket science t scientist, and I know we have two rocket scientists that are here in our congregation, but, and they're married to each other, but for real, um, to, to understand that words are really powerful, and, and just the media itself, how critical it has been, is disgraceful. But when the church aligns with that, that's even worse. Now, I don't care what your political uh, viewpoints are, it's, that's not my point. It's, we have to, again, get back to what does the word of God say regarding what we say and what we speak? Because you know what? It comes back and it bites us. So we can curse and we can call out and we can, you know, talk about people and we can malign people. But let me tell you this, it hurts us. It comes right on back to us and you'll see today. So again, the tongue has the power of life and death. Those who love it will eat its fruit. And so I was thinking about it and I, and the Lord said to me, well, you know, there's, there's a lot in you, Tricia, that you have to adjust about just even, you know, how we get negative about our family life or about our own self or the way you look or, you know, people like, you know, we all have something to say. I mean, someone can just walk in the room. They look weird. You're like, what's up with that? Right? I mean, we all have some, a smart aleck remark to say, don't we? I mean, I said, Lord Jesus, have mercy on my soul. Joel had that word today about mercy. I'm like, dear God, have mercy on my soul. Because as I was going through this, I thought, yeah, Lord, I'm pretty good about this. I really watch the words I say. He goes, really? He goes, well, let me show you something. No, he didn't show you. He showed me. <laughs> so I thought, oh, my goodness, Lord. I said, I am really, really submitting my tongue to you, my mouth to you, because I don't want to hinder. And I want to be that light. Ann Matthews, I mean, listen, Ann, didn't, Ann wasn't Jesus, right? But Ann Matthews was such an example to all of us. And, and, and she loved, I mean, she used to come to our Bible study. She was always so encouraging and so kind. And, you know, I, we, a lot of us can be pretty critical. A lot of us can be really sarcastic and have really smart aleck remarks to say and a lot of things, and it really hurts us. Again, life and death are in the power of our tongue. The next scripture, it says here in, in Proverbs 6, 2, all right, hold on a minute. What we speak will be key for victory and advancing in, our, in the kingdom of God, advancing in our life. What we speak, how many times, you know, we, we could be praying and believing God for a breakthrough in a job, but all we do is curse our job. You know, so again, we, we can't be double-minded in that. So in Proverbs, you can go to the, that slide where it says Proverbs 6.2. In the Passion trans Translation, Proverbs 6.2, you have that one, right? Okay, Proverbs 6, 2, it says, you'll be trapped by your promise and legally bound by the agreement. The Amplified Version says, you are snared with the words of your lips. You are caught by the speech of your mouth. Wow. And let me tell you, I have been snared with the words of my lips. We have to watch. This is really serious stuff. Just like Peter was talking about finances. You know, there are over 2,000 scriptures on finances. 
and, and money always is a heart issue. You know, we all hate talking about money. It's like, oh, you feel really uncomfortable. But we all, you know, we, you need money to live, right? You, you, we have to talk about it. And it's a heart issue. This is also a heart issue. Out of the abundance of our heart, what our mouth speaks, what we say is, is critical. And it's really important to uh, watch what we're saying. All right. So I'm going to repeat that scripture again. You are snared with the words of your lips and you are caught by the speech of your mouth. So, so I looked up the word snared. So it's up there. It means to, to lure, to entice. Well, that's the second part. All right. The first part's to lure, to entice, to snare, to lay a trap, um, to uh, set a trap. So what we say is we're, we're, we're allowing ourselves to get trapped. And the enemy, it's like a scent, like Peter was saying. It's a scent that's released that, that attracts the enemy. All right, James 3, 2 in the Passion. That's not on the, on the uh, slide. It says, we all fail in many areas, but especially with our words. Yet if we were able to bridle our tongue, the words we say are powerful enough to control ourselves in every way. I'm telling you, there are addictions, there are issues in our lives that because of what we focus on, because of our meditations, the meditations of our heart, that's what's coming out of our mouth. And there are issues. You may have drug issues. You might have uh, anger issues. You may have bitterness issues. You know, whatever it is, it's what are you meditating on. It's the words that you're saying that really are quite hurtful. And God wants that to shift. And so, again, as I was, I was looking over all this stuff, I thought, man, Lord, we have to, we do. We, we all have to change. So this isn't a message that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking at you. It's a word that the Lord said we all have to tighten up. We all have to get better because every single one of us here have something to say about something. <laughs> And it's gotten worse and worse and worse. And t it's to the point where I really can't even stand listening to some of the news media and how critical it is. And then who's, like, I even read some comments of, like, these are Christians that are responding to some of the, whatever the, the whatever's going on in news media. They're trashing the people just as bad as the world. Come on. We need to stop. And we need to get our hearts aligned with Jesus. Would Jesus say that? No. And so it, it's not, you, you're, you say, oh, I'm calling a person out on something. You can call a person out, but not shame them and not trash talk them. So that, I'm telling you, we have to shift here. So Psalm 34 says, in one, verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continuously be in my mouth. Not bitterness, not criticism, not condemnation. And I'm telling you, this hinders the revival in our own personal lives. So I looked up, in, you know, in Isaiah where it talks about fasting. So I'm going to read to you a portion of scripture here. Um, I don't know what version I have here. I don't have that on the handout, so I changed it a little bit this morning. In, in Isaiah 58, let me just read to you this portion. So it's talking about the fast that God has chosen. So starting in verse 5, it says, Is such a fast as yours what I have chosen, a day for a man to humble himself with sorrow in it, in his soul? Is true fasting merely mechanical? Is it only to bow his head like a bulrush and to spread slack, sackcloth and ashes under him? To indicate a condition of heart that he does not have? Will you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Rather, is not this fast that I've chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every enslaving yoke? Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your house? And then I'm just going to skip that. Verse 8, then your light shall break forth like the morning and your healing, your restoration and the power of new life shall spring forth speedily. And it talks about, you know, the peace of the Lord. Then it says in verse 9 is really what I want here. Then you shall call on the Lord to answer your cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away from the, your midst yokes of oppression, wherever you find them, the finger pointed in scorn towards the oppressed or, or, the, or the godly, in every form of false, harsh, unjust, and wicked speaking. Another version says, Fasting, uh, the Lord will hear our cries if we remove the pointing of the finger and speaking wi wickedness. All right, and, and that word fast in this portion of scripture means to cover the mouth. 
So we have to want, is look at what it's saying. He says the light of God will break forth. Your healing and your restoration and, and your power of new life shall spring forth. I mean, come on. How many times have you just said, this will never happen? This won't change. That person will never change. This situation will not change. Well, I beg to differ with you. Because my God says that with God, absolutely nothing shall be called impossible. When they said that Daniel's not going to make it, this kid that had this boating accident, how old is he, 21? 20 years old. They said he's not going to, and then he won't, he, he won't be able to move his legs. He won't be able to move his eyes. I mean, his arms or open up his eyes. But guess what he's doing? He's moving his legs. He's moving his arms. See, we don't give up. We pray, we press, but again, where the power of the Lord is, we have to come into complete surrender and alignment with the spirit of the Lord because we can't have, and James, it says, you can't have a fountain coming out of your mouth with bitter and sweet waters. That is what hinders us. So we can go to church 15 times a week. We can act like Joe spiritual, but in our hearts, act like the devil. How are we different from the world? Right? I mean, we'll be driving. And Peter's being all kind and patient. I'm like, step on it. Don't let the person in. You know, and he's like, Trisha. I'm like, oh, my God. Now we're going to have that guy in front of us, and he's going to go really slow? Oh. So he's like, Trisha, just calm down. I'm like, oh, my God. See, the Lord brought that up to me. He goes, Trisha, this is your heart. I'm like, oh, Lord, I hate when I don't drive slow in front of me, whatever you do. You know, but geez, they have the fast lane for the fast cars in the left lane, not the mid. Come on. Right. All right. I just had to get that out. <laughs> oh, my God. I said, like, so I said, I'm, I'm reading this. And the Lord said to me, mm -hmm. and he brought that up. And I thought, I said, why are you bringing that up? 